Okay, when you empower people, things can go wrong. You just have to learn from it and move on. Empowering the hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> just... I'm short here now. Welcome back all you lovely people. I'm so happy to see you. This episode is a bit of a special episode because it still has its theme that is about the purpose of the vlog and so on. But it's also a message uh, reaching out to a guy called Dan Mays. He's from South Africa and I hope he's watching this. Are you watching Brew? 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 How do you say? Brew? Brew? Are you watching Brew? 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 I did my utmost Dan to make it right. When I stopped the vlog last time, I was in Toronto and I went down into the streets to see what Toronto has to offer. And I was there for a couple of days and I really, really enjoyed it. And I was there for a special reason. This time the reason is not to do good to others as I would normally say. This time the good reason is to do good to myself. I've been out doing leadership seminars for a couple of days and I spend a lot of energy, spend a lot of energy in others. And now it's just a good idea to, good, to do something good for myself. And uh, that's just staying here in Toronto and enjoying whatever Toronto has to offer. No plans, no agenda, just enjoying the city and wherever it takes me. So that's what I'm gonna do for a couple of days. So what I wanna say with that episode or with that message saying it's about doing good to me is that I normally want to do good to others. I kind of like the signal that I'm sending. We should do good to others. We should collaborate with others. And this is one of the reasons that this is also an episode for Dan Mays because um, the purpose of my vlog, what I'm doing, I want to change the way we work. I want to make the world a better place to work because we're too busy, we're too focused on doing a lot of stuff and need to do more and we want more out of each other and it's such a demanding world. And suddenly we also all feel that we are entitled to a lot of things because we are delivering a lot of things. And it has gone wrong and we can see that by the stress epitome that is running over the entire globe right now. The thing is, we're used to talk about what kind of leadership methods could we use? What kind of framework do we have? What kind of tools can we implement? And I don't believe in tools because a tool that would work on me as a human being wouldn't work on a lot of other people. So the purpose of my vlogs, the purpose of my podcast, the purpose of what I'm doing when I'm out doing keynote presentations, the purpose of what I'm doing when I'm out being part of management teams, management groups, and our training groups and so on. It's not to train tools. It's to train mindsets. Because it's mindsets that change the world. And if you think about guys like Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, and all these major personalities and, and great leaders, they didn't come out with a bunch of tools and saying, this is how we should do this, is, this is how you should take people you want to follow you and put them into these categories and these boxes and then everything is great. They didn't do that. They just sent a signal of what they believed was good to do and how they saw themselves and what they did. And that was what people wanted to follow. They were authentic. So my podcast, my vlogs, have to be authentic more than me discussing different kind of leadership models. I've often had the question, why don't you talk about, for example, leadership pipeline, servant leadership, or all these leadership models, why don't you talk about it? Why don't you do whatever? And it's because I don't wanna do that. We could do that and sometimes I also draw small parallels to this we can see in this kind of leadership philosophy and so on. But, but in general, that's not what this vlog is about. This vlog is about creating mindset. It's about having the mindset of doing good to others, investing in others, and helping each other, collaborating. Even though they're employees or even though they are our managers, we should collaborate with them. We should invest in them because that's how we create great things together. Even it could be content or it could be products, it could be whatever. If we create by investing in each other, if we accept that as long as we are two or more people together, it's relationships, if we understand that, then it's the mindset that matters. It's not the tools that we put people into. Which brings me to Dan Mace. Because Dan is a YouTube creator. He's a brilliant photographer, movie maker from, uh, content maker from, from South Africa. He has been uh, the last month in, uh, in New York, working closely, collaborating closely with Casey Neistat. He has his own special way of creating content 
and it's beautiful really really beautiful So I spent the last couple of weeks and he's not afraid of talking about topics that are vulnerable. Really shitty place to be and if you're there maybe watch that film and I hope you resolve some of those creative issues. But for now I'm sitting on a Ferris wheel in a place called Maryland. And I like him for doing that. And in his last video he said like this. I have this idea. No. Wait. I have this really ambitious idea. I found my idea book from five years ago with a goal to create a film so ambitious it would change the perception of millions of people around the globe. I'm gonna make this film. When I think of the world we live in, I think of a term called WTF. Why the fail? What's wrong with the world? I see people huddled up in cliques. I see the period we're living in as the era of disconnect. I see people too afraid to speak their mind as they may come across as offensive or demeaning about some minority sect. I see a world of self-diagnosed defenders. I see a world of beautiful content hidden behind censors. I ask the question why we continually search for negative motives, giving no space for the good to speak freely. Now you may have many answers to this, but this is my mind. So therefore stop listening to answer and start listening to understand that I'm not making this movie because I'm trying to tackle some minority or stand on a hand-me-down white privilege pedestal with a golden spoon in my mouth to preach. No, I have an idea that will showcase a world of beautiful people that will give voice to the unsung heroes, the hidden gemstone. Okay, so the idea, the film, I need you, very literally, I need 100 filmmakers from 100 different countries around the world to create this piece with me. And sitting here in Denmark saying, I'm not gonna help him on that. That's his own thing. Hell no, I wanna be one of those 100 if possible. That's why you're in this vlog, Dan Mace. Because I wanna help in that. I wanna participate in that product. Question is, what do I get out of it? Nothing. Nothing as far as I know. But I'm getting to be a part of a product that I would love being a part of. And that in itself, it's worth a lot to me. If I have the time, if I have the competences, if I have whatever it takes, I can do that. I would love to do that. I should do that, not for Dan, but for me. And then it's good for Dan as well. And we can then do something together, together with 99 other people. Isn't that brilliant? Now we're not going into this cooperation because we want a lot of other, out of each other. We'll do it because it makes sense. And something good will come back. It might be a lot of recognition, online because together we've made a great job or whatever I don't know and it doesn't matter the thing is there's something here I believe in that I would like to be a part of and I know that Dan sends signals about things in life that are important I would be an idiot not to ask if he would take me on board so I would love that so I'm an APA business psychologist am I good enough at creating content for Dan's movie I don't know but I do know that I'm willing to do my utmost I do know that I'm passionate about creating content I do know I love doing it I love doing my own vlogs I love doing the podcast so I know all that and I know I will do my utmost which is often good enough and I know that a lot of the things that I've learned about creating movies I've learned from people like Dan he has shown how he tells stories and I've looked at people like Casey Neistat and Peter McKinnon and Phil Rudd and so on. People who have shared how do we create content, how do we create movies. And I've taken all that and made it into my way of communicating and telling stories as well. So last time I told kind of a story, I wrote a book called Compassion Focused Leadership because leadership psychology is my trade. And my next book, it's not gonna be a book, it's gonna be a movie created with passion. So I'm gonna share and give back what I've been taught on the internet. I'm gonna give that back with the knowledge I have as well by creating a movie about leadership. So I've been trying out a lot of things in order for me to become better at creating content. I do the vlog, but I've also been doing a music movie.
I made a commercial for my brother. And I made this small scene that is about the resistance under the Second World War. Det er den sidste opgave. Så er det slut. So I am doing a lot of different ways of telling stories and I am rehearsing, I'm trying, I'm doing my utmost. And I hope that's good enough because Dan, I would love to be a part of your project. And again, that would teach me more about becoming a better creator. So when I'm giving back my story about leadership and how to do leadership, I can become one who does it even better than I do today because I would love that. So all of this wanting to become better, is that a part of this stress epitome that is worldwide where everybody needs to do more, do better, do more? No, it's not because it's inner motivated. It's motivated by my own inner drive and passion. So I don't feel that people expect it from me. I don't feel that people want from me. The only thing I feel is me having the opportunity of working with my passion. And it feels great. So in the real world, it's just not easy to just take mistakes and forget about it, learn from it and forget about it and move on because this hair, it's totally frustrating me. It's, I didn't know that so much of my identity was in that hair, but it is, and, and I can't really cope with what's going on, but her intentions weren't bad. She did what she thought was right. I empowered her. I have to I just have to go through the pain and suffering and then understand that yeah, that's that's part of the game. That's part of me learning. It has to be painful sometimes. But I think I will be more focused on creating a mutual understanding next time. I will go to the hairdresser. Now it's me going to the southern part of Denmark. Shut up. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and uh, like it if you did and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and then press that little uh, notification bell and uh, I will see you in the next one. And Dan, 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 don't forget to write me back. I would love to work with you.